Hey everyone, this is Neo once again from The Overclocker. Right, so a few weeks ago, through a series of unrelated events, I ended up with both the GeForce RTX 4060 Ti 8 Gigabyte and the RTX 4070 12 Gigabyte from Gigabyte. I thought, well, why not actually compare these to find out which one makes the most sense in terms of value proposition, right? Uh, cost versus performance. Pricing, of course, has been a big issue for the 4000 series of cards and easily the most poorly received pricing adjustment in the last decade, if probably not forever. That said, we'll talk about that at a later point, but let's not waste any time right now and let's jump straight into the benchmarks so that they can help justify what I'm about to say to you at the end of the results and so forth. So first up, we have is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Right, so not the latest in the series, but it is one game that I have and a number of people I imagine are still playing it. Either way, the 4070 Ti figures are just here for context. So ignore those and focus squarely on the 4070 and 4060 for now. 1080p performance is great on both cards, of course, each delivering over 120 frames per second on average at the highest settings, right? 1440p sees the 4060 Ti still able to push well above 90 frames per second against the nearly 120 frames per second of the 4070. Interesting though, the 4070 at 1440p delivers higher 1% 1 lows than the 4060 Ti's average frame rate at the same resolution. Next up is Forza Horizon 5. At some point, I'll replace this benchmark with the motorsport version because that is the newer game. However, this remains a fun and popular title that still looks great even today. The RTX 4060 Ti again delivers fantastic results, able to deliver over 120 frames per second at 1080p and a mighty 103 frames per second at QHD. As we saw with Assassin's Creed, the 4070's QHD performance surpasses that of the 4060, 4060 Ti at 1080p. Both deliver phenomenal results, but this just highlights just how much faster the 4070 is than the 4060 Ti. Finally, we have Hitman 3 or Hitman World of Assassination as it's called now. DLSS is disabled of course, but RT is fully enabled. Why? Well, I'll need these results for an upcoming Radeon GPU review, right? Same rig, same everything, so that's not going to change. That said, the 4060 Ti is again able to deliver over 60 FPS at 1080p. The 1% 1 lows are a little on the concerning side, but nothing you'd actually notice or experience during actual gameplay. The 4070 of course does a lot better here, but unfortunately doesn't manage to break the 60 FPS mark at 1440p. Perhaps something overclocking could remedy. I for one think that in such situations that are borderline, overclocking is worth it as it would lift both the 1% lows and the average frame rate taking it to above 60 FPS. All right, so we get to Cyberpunk now, which some would argue is the most technically or graphically advanced game on the market today. Yes, ray tracing is set to medium, but the 4060 Ti is surprisingly good here at those settings, managing to reach 60 FPS at 1080p without the assistance of DLSS. And that's impressive stuff, I have to say. The 4070 is obviously faster with this 1% lows above the 4060 Ti's average frame rate. The 4070 delivers a pristine but a smooth experience at these settings. However, this does not hold true, unfortunately, at 1440p, where you will most certainly need to rely on DLSS to bring the frame rate up to 60 FPS or a bit more. For the 4060 Ti, 1440p isn't really an option. I mean, you can turn to DLSS and frame generation, fortunately, which is good, uh, which and, and should do the trick. But in raw performance terms, 1440p is just asking a bit too much for the 4060 Ti. Metro is an older game, probably the second oldest game in the entire bench suite, but its extreme preset can still prove to be challenging for modern GPUs, right? For the first time, we see the 4060 Ti isn't able to breach the 60 FPS mark. 56 frames per second is still more than playable, but it is clear that turning on DLSS is the most obvious way to get over 60 frames per second. The 4070, however, handles this title very well and in fact, at 1440p, 
delivers an identical experience to that of the 4060 Ti at 1080p. I suspect the narrow bus width of the 4060 Ti is one of, if not the largest contributor to the less than stellar and largely unplayable performance at 1440p. And Red Dead Redemption, this is easily and for sure the oldest title here, but one that can be demanding depending on the settings. I use the favor quality mode here with the slider set to the far right, of course. 1080p performance is great on the 4060 Ti, but surprisingly, the 1440p performance is actually very smooth. By comparison, the 4070 of course does much better here, but not by the margins I'd expected. Either way, it's a great performance from both cards, you know. So in this title, I think both cards are performing exceptionally well. No right then, we finally get to the synthetic tests. There's not much to say here. I mean, the numbers are exactly what you'd expect. However, this does highlight to me just how Nvidia has actually shortchanged us with this generation outside of the RTX 4090 for some reason. I mean, consider this, the 4060 Ti should never deliver half the score of anything in the 70 range. Yet that's almost what we see here. The 4070 Ti being almost double the performance of the 4060 Ti. The difference between these GPUs is not as large in 3D Mark, but it is still there. And power consumption is as expected, of course. The RTX 40 series is exceptional at power consumption. The 4060 Ti sips power at just 154 watts during gameplay, which is 100 watts less than what the 4070 Ti is delivering. The 4070 Ti draws 41% more power for a 34% performance improvement overall. It's not bad and it's actually kind of expected because I mean the higher up you go the less efficient the GPU is going to become but I would have preferred better scaling right let's just say that when we average the game performance however we see that the 4060 Ti is by and large a solid 1080p offering and the 4070 delivering 1% lows at 66 frames per second as well but at 1440p. And finally, we get to the entire point of this video, just the value proposition. So the RTX 4070 offers on average 22% better performance across both resolutions, but carries a 39% price premium over the same brand and SKU 4060 Ti. So what I'm saying is to you is that essentially the 4070 gaming OC will cost you 39% more than the 4060 Ti gaming OC. It's not a great showing for the RTX 4070, but this was averaged across three retail outlets and across three different vendors, in fact. And by this metric alone, the best value for mining card here is unfortunately the 4060 Ti 8GB, something I thought I'd never say. And in fact, I started this entire video to prove just how poor its value proposition is. And then the numbers decided that they're going to do their own thing, right? When the math just does its own thing. That said, in general, the NVIDIA RTX 40 series offers some questionable pricing to say the least. I mean, again, take a look at the 4070 Ti for example. It's a whopping 97% more than the 4060 Ti, yet only offers a 34% performance advantage overall. That said, and despite the numbers showing otherwise, I would still and most certainly go with the RTX 4070. Ideally, this is what I would have wanted to see from the RTX 40 series, you know? Uh, for me, as this diagram shows, I would have wanted to see the 4070 Ti becoming the regular 4070, the current 4070 12 gigabyte changing to the 4060 Ti, meaning that there would not be a 16 and an eight gigabyte version. It's just a 12 gigabyte 4060 Ti. Prices could have remained probably the same, but it would still represent better performance scaling between the cards compared to what we have at present. Either way, that's all for now. Um, the numbers may say different. However, if I were looking for a new GPU right now in NVIDIA's lineup, I'd most certainly spend a little more on the 4070 than the 4060 Ti. So with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, are you using a 4060, 4070? Are you looking to buy anything in NVIDIA's current lineup? Or are you looking for what I assume are going to be price adjustments next year when the Super Series come out? But either way, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. So take care and peace.